If you want to know the easiest way to make the best cold brew you've ever had, then watch this whole video. Hi, welcome back to Our Family Beat. I'm Brigitte, and we're gonna show you the easiest way to make the best cold brew ever. And if you're already part of this community, go ahead and hit that like button. But if you're new here, here's what you need to know. We are all about family. We do videos on marriage and money and meals and grocery hauls and organization because we're on a mission to inspire each other to love well, live wisely, and be better together. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification bell up to all so you don't miss any videos we have coming out, which is every Tuesday and Friday. This is an update video on the third video we ever did. If you want to see that, I will link it below. It's pretty cringy, so just watch this one. But we've been working on this cold brew recipe for the last six years. It's six years, and we've perfected it. We make it different than any other person we've seen on the internet. We do a four-step process. It's super easy, low maintenance, and you will be able to make coffee in bulk because let me tell you, it's so good, you're going to want to. Future Brigitte here. We completely forgot to tell you about two of the biggest benefits of cold brew. One, way lower acid content. We found from some basic Googling that cold brew can have as much as 70% less acid. This is especially important for us because Brandon has a pretty serious condition that's super aggravated by anything acidic, but he loves coffee. This also makes it better for your teeth and conducive to an alkaline diet if you're going for that. Two, it costs so much less money. To get as much cold brew as we drink per day at Starbucks, you'd have to get a venti. They use a concentrate which is sharper and more bitter and they just dilute it with twice as much water. And you know how much this inferior beverage costs? $3.95. Last year, we figured out that to make our cold brew, it costs only 35 cents a cup. And let's say you don't get a good deal on the bag of beans. Okay, maybe you're paying 50 cents a cup, but still, that is way cheaper. So you're getting better, smoother cold brew for up to 90% less. This is the best way to go, and you don't have to take our word for it. The only way I drink my iced coffee is the way I learned it from our family B. Quick, it's easy, whoa. Delicious. Thank you, our family B. I love this cold brew, and when Brandon and Brigitte released the recipe, I just had to try it myself. I love that it's really strong coffee, but also very smooth. Uh, it doesn't have that bitter taste that a lot of the store-bought cold brews really do. And I tend to drink mine in the afternoon. It gives that perfect pick-me-up. I love this recipe. I make it at home. It's really great. Go try it. So I'm actually a huge cold brew fan, but one of the biggest problems I have with it is that whether I buy it or make it, it almost always tastes bitter to me. But this recipe is not bitter at all. It's like the smoothest coffee I've ever tasted. So you should definitely try it. The most important part of your cold brew is the bean. This bean is so full bodied, nutty, smooth. It doesn't leave that after bite acidic flavor in your throat. It's the best bean and you really need to try it with this. We've tried it with other beans, but it's just not as good. We use Pete's Major Dixon's blend. We're gonna link all the stuff I'm talking about down below. It's the best. I don't know what, how to say it naturally. We use this, it's the best, get it. <laughs> Along with your coffee, which I would recommend getting a whole bean, you're going to need a grinder. This one's great because it has multiple settings where you can make it a different grind, coarse or fine. We'll talk more about that later. You can use a manual, but we use electric. You'll need some mason jars. We use four of these half gallon sizes because we make two gallons at a time in bulk. They're relatively cheap, they're multi-purpose, and we think they're kind of cute. You'll also need a measuring cup, and a funnel. We use this bigger funnel for wide mouth mason jars. That'll also be linked down below. When you go to filter, you're gonna need a steel mesh filter for wide mouth mason jars, some regular paper filters, a strainer of some sort, and a bowl that the strainer will fit over. Step one is to grind your beans. Like we mentioned, we use an electric coffee grinder for this. It's actually super important to make sure that even if your grinder doesn't have multiple settings, you use a coarse grind. You don't want the fine particles you get for drip coffee, which is why pre-ground is no good here. You need to use the same kind of grind you would for a French press. If you've never ground coffee beans before, no problem. It should look something like this when you're done. Better to do lots of grinding than to overfill your grinder. So just keep repeating this process until you end up with one and a quarter cups of coarse ground coffee for each half gallon you're making. Trust us, this is the magic ratio. Less is insufficient, more is waste. Set aside each jar as you go. We line them all up together and work through an assembly line process. Step two is to fill your mason jar with water. 
We use our Berkey water filter for this because it's the best filter out there. It takes out everything. We'll link it below so you can check it out. You'll want to fill these right to the neck of the jar. We haven't ever measured the finished product exactly, but we think we end up with about six and a half cups from each half gallon. I use a dry erase marker to label the lid with the day and time, just in case I forget. Hey, life gets busy. Step three is to let them steep. Set them on the counter, out of the way, and wait. Shake them once or twice and leave them alone. The magic happens over time. Seriously, no less than 48 hours. We usually do over 72 and we've gone as long as a week before and it's still totally good. Less than 48 hours and we find there's just not enough punch. It's three days later and it's time for step four, which is to filter. Now this is where you actually get to do a little bit of work. We use a two-step process, and this is another important piece that sets this method apart. There are a lot of methods out there that only use a mesh filter, which is okay, but it leaves you with a lot of ultra-fine sediment that leaves too much graininess in the finished product. Remember, we're going for super rich and super smooth, just like this segue telling you you should totally subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And make sure you click the bell and check it up to all so you don't miss any notifications that come out when we post new videos, which is every Tuesday and Friday. If you love coffee and your friends love coffee and they want to know how to make the best cold brew on the planet, then share this video with them. And if you're getting value out of this, hit the like button and comment down below because it really helps our channel to grow and we love getting to know you guys. Now where was I? Oh yeah, we want this to be super rich and super smooth without resorting to a concentrate. So we use this mesh filter in each of the mason jars. Look how easy this is. Just unscrew the top, replace the lid with the filter, screw the top on, and pour it out. I know, it's crazy. And then we pour that over a regular paper filter over a bowl. Any large container that you can fit a strainer over will work great. We recommend using one to two paper filters per half gallon because when they start to get junky and all that sediment in there, that's when you wanna toss it. And all that particulate stuck on there? Yeah, you'd be drinking that without double filtering. How this routine usually works in our house is on the weekends or in the evenings when I'm making dinner, I will start the filtering process. I do it in between making dinner or making breakfast on the weekends. It's so easy and I'm already in the kitchen, so why not? Store this in the fridge for up to two weeks and enjoy. We drink 10 to 12 ounces a day of this with just a splash of heavy whipping cream and we love it. This is the best method we've ever found for making cold brew and everyone who's tried it agrees. You can get everything we've mentioned at our Amazon store with the link down below under coffee. We had to make a whole new section just for this. Let us know if you have another method to make smoother or more flavorful cold brew. And you know, after we doubt you for a minute, maybe we'll go check it out. Don't forget to hit the like button and head over to Instagram at OFB Social because we love connecting with you guys over there. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the button right here because if you didn't know it yet, you belong here. If you wanna check out some more videos, we've got some right here. The recipes that will go great with the cold brew and some other videos right here. Until we meet again, don't forget, life is better together. Oh. <laughs>